Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to my shop. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing how uh, I went about replacing the skylight on our 2003 Monaco Dynasty 40-foot uh, Baroness coach. Um, it's 20 years old. This, this, is Febu or this, this is just late February 2022. The coach was built in February of 2002, marketed as a 2003, so it's officially 20 years old. Um, I've been seeing on some of the Facebook and forums and so forth where people are starting to have problems with their skylights that are actually 2002, 2000 through about 2008 even. So I have not had any problems with mine, so this is completely proactive and preventive measures. I don't want to be on the road somewhere and have, you know, a tree branch or hail or something like that cause me to ruin my vacation because um, I think the skylight's getting a little uh, brittle. Uh, there's just... It's not cracked or anything, just right around the four corners, well, three of the four corners, there's some really, really fine uh, spider cracks that are like, like in the Lexan, like from UV, and it's pretty chalked out. So other than that, it's not leaking or anything. I'm just going to pull the old one off, put the new one on, and I'm gonna show you how, how I'm going about it. I'm going about it a little differently than just pulling the old one, sticking the new one on, and screwing it on. I'm actually going to build a picture frame out of one and three quarter inch wide by three sixteenth uh, 6061 aluminum weld in the perimeter and that will actually sandwich the Lexan and the inner bubble down to the down to the roof so I, I, my, my theory is is the screw heads at each one of those screw holes there's so much pressure at each one of those um, I, I just I, I feel like with a, some kind of a framework it'll put more even pressure down rather than just the pressure at the screw heads. Again, whatever the manufacturer did or the way the manufacturer did it worked. It's been good for 20 years, no leaks. Um, I just think there's a better way of doing it. And obviously, like most things, I probably am overthinking it. I probably should have just, I probably should have pulled it off and put it back on the same way, but I want to, I want to add my touch to it. So. Follow along, this is how I'm gonna replace the skylight on ours. This one is a 22 by 30, um, uh, and I used a recreations, uh, recreations Specialty. There's Icons, another one. Recreation Specialty is the one that I chose to go with. Um, I ordered this actually last fall, what, not quite sure what issues were gonna be with delivery. Um, I thought I wasn't gonna replace it until this spring, but I thought I wanna, I, I, I ordered it thinking, well, that'll give him a few months. It was on my doorstep within a few days. So it's been sitting here in the shop for a few months while I've been busy doing other things. But it's, uh, it's time to get it done. We're almost into our travel season, and I want everything pristine when she rolls out of the shop. So um, follow along as I show you how I go about replacing our so, skylight. So there again, my approach is going to be a little different to this. Um, obviously, um, the, uh, the, way the, the way that Monaco and the way that 99 point probably nine percent of the manufacturers out there do it is has worked um i have seen i've seen an, a few leak and i've heard of even more leaking um i've seen people replace them and tighten these screws down so tight thinking they're going to get a better seal and they end up cracking from the screw hole up to the uh the where the dome begins and then you got a leak so there's just there's just a lot of things that I don't like about having them just screwed down like that. So my approach is going to be a little bit differently, they're a little bit different. I got, I purchased some one and three quarter by three sixteenths um, aluminum strap. And I am basically, basically going to build a picture frame, if you will, that goes around the perimeter that will um, be welded at the corners. And then the, I'll transfer the holes into this, so I'm not drilling extra holes in the in the lex in the in the polycarbonate uh, skylight. So I'll, I'll get it all done. I'll clamp it. I'll go through and mark it. Transfer the holes through, drill it, and then when it goes onto the coach, it will be. I'll clean everything off. Pull the old one. Clean everything off. There'll be sealant, the s inner bubble sealant, the outer bubble sealant, and then this picture frame, if you will will secure it all down. And I just purchased some uh, number eight by, I think these are one and a quarter. I went a little bit longer to compensate for the extra 
Yeah, one and a quarter tech screws, number eight by one and a quarter tech screws, and those will be spaced along here um, in, in the, in the uh, company holes. Now, as that's tightening down, it's obviously going to ooze out the adhesive around the perimeter, which I will clean back. And then, I haven't decided quite yet, I more than likely, it, I, I'm just going to wait and see how, before I say anything, I'm going to wait and see how it goes. I may come in and run a bead around this outside perimeter to keep, if water sits on there, to keep it from going in. But I think there's going to be enough that oozes out that I'll be able to just run around it and create a seal along there. And then I'll just put some on each of the heads of the screws. Um, now, which leads me, to, leads me to sealant. You want to make sure and use the proper sealant for these. Um, I know a lot of people use Dicor, and for some reason the Dicor, I don't know if it's the petroleum in them or what, but the Dicor can actually, so I'm thinking that may be the reason why some, there's a lot of people with 08, 09s that are having these fail and they're cracking right along where the sealant is. It could very well be because of the um, uh, petroleum base in, in the, in the Dicor that's attacking this polycarbonate. Um, you do not want to use uh, uh, Dicor on these skylights. You want to use the actual skylight sealant. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not self-leveling. It's more like a, uh, a thick butyl um, putty, if you will. Uh, this, this particular skylight is a uh, recreation specialties. Specialty Recreation. This is a specialty recreation. They have their own adhesive called uh, SR, SR140 from Specialty Recreation. Now, the, another brand of Skylight is Icon. Icon is a very popular one. Icon also has one that they have. Actually, it says right on it, Butyl Rubber, and that's their own Skylight sealant. So, I think they're pretty much the same thing. Um, there's another one out there called SB140, and I think it's a variant of the SR140, but probably a generic um, brand. But you want to make sure you use, the important thing is you want to make sure you use Skylight Sealant. And if you're touching it up over the years, you want to make sure to still use that. You want to stay away from the, the Dicor, because like I said, the Dicor will attack and cause premature cracking and failure of the uh, polycarbonate. So anyway, so with that being said, I've got one, I've got two pieces clamped here to my fabrication table. I just have to make a couple cuts and I can start welding it. And then once I get them welded, once I get the corners welded, TIG, I'm gonna just gonna use the TIG welding process, uh, GTAW, gas tungsten arc welding. Um, once I get that done, I will metal finish probably the underside to make sure it doesn't put a stress riser down on the skylight. The, the, the bead profile on the top is not gonna hurt anything, so I won't do anything with that. And then once I get the picture frame done, I will transfer those holes from the skylight through. So let's get to that point. Um, and then before we go up on the roof and start pulling the old one. Measurement wise, we want to use, I don't, I want to make sure I come into the corners here. There's, there's a screw hole out here at the outer corner. I don't want to 45 it and have it go right through that screw hole. So I could, pro, I could, either do it that way actually I think I'm going to come in this I think I'm going to run the lengthwise this way the two outside corners because that will capture that hole and then give me a yeah I think I'll do that and then I'll go in between for the others so this measurement this is a 20 what the heck is this 20 22 by 30, I think. Memory serves. Been a while since I ordered this last fall, thinking it would, you know, like everything else, it'd be take time to be delayed order getting it. And I had it on my doorstep in about three days. So, um, yeah, this is a 22 by 30. So outside to outside is 33 and 9 sixteenths. So 33 and 9 sixteenths with that there. And 22 and 3 eighths. And the last cut being made. And 
ready to uh, chamfer the all the edges now. So I've got the uh, each piece prepped. I put a slight chamfer on the end of each one to allow about a sixteenth of an inch land. So I'll burn down in this side, then I flip it over. I get the back side, and then I'll actually metal finish the back side so it sits flat. Um, I probably will just leave the bead on the top section here. No need to, no need to uh, finish it off. It's going to be on. It's going to be facing up. Um, what I like to do when I first start these is I will put a bead across, kind of fuse this end out here because I'm going to weld from the inside to out, and I will put a bead here, and it acts two things. Number one, it's a tack. And number two, as I'm welding this way, it's pushing the heat this way, so I'm going to be tapering off the pedal. But as I taper, as I push this way, that acts like a dam to kind of hold that molten puddle there um, and act as a stop. So we'll go ahead and start out here. <laughs> Now I'll start in here in the inside corner, and then I'll uh, just uh, fill it up so it's about flush, maybe even stand a little bit proud of the parent material. I stayed a little bit long there at the end and it broadened out a little bit but I wanted to make sure I got that tack fully uh, molten in but yeah that's uh, that's just barely a little proud there is the frame welded um, the back side is metal finished off I left the welds protruding on the front and then I run around the perimeter just with a DA um, so that's uh, ready to go on. I've got the holes all, I clamped it to the dome and marked everything and drilled the holes. So let's uh, set it on the dome and make sure everything lines up. So I've got a, just a piece of tape here on this corner of the skylight and then a tape, piece of tape here as my reference. So it's good, it's good. Position maybe about a half a hole off. Yeah, about a half. Well, maybe not. Just shift it just a little bit. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's going to fit perfectly. So, all right. I guess the next order of business is to get the old skylight off, and then this one can go on. So here you can see, this is not a bad install by any means on Monaco's part. Um, it has held up well. This is all original and just, a, I don't know, six, eight years ago, I had to add a little bit of touch up. I came in with some mineral spirits and cleaned, um, there were some cracks, I cleaned the cracks and added some more skylight sealant. Um, but I mean, other than that, this is the original um, skylight and it is 20 years old, exactly. The coach rolled off the assembly line of Monaco at, on February of 2002. So here it being February 2022, it's 20 years old exactly. And I have no complaints. I've never had any leaks. Um, it's not cracked along here at all. It's hard to see in the light because the um, the compositor, the Lexan, is very faded, but in the right light, right here on the corners, this one maybe in particular, you can see, there's just a really fine, like, spider cracks that are just starting to form. But, I mean, even that, I mean, here's, I'm pushing on it, and it's still, fair, no, I shouldn't say fairly, it's still pliable. It's still pliable. 
Um, but with uh, everything I'm seeing as far as people replacing theirs, I figured it's due. I would rather change it out on my time versus being on vacation and having it decide when it gets changed. So, and you can see they put screws, I'm guessing about every two and a half to three inches. Um, yeah, that one to that one's about two and three quarters, three, three, Oh, and there's two and a quarter, so it varies, but every two and a half to three inches. And there's, I mean, there's, there's, there's really not, it's not really bulging up between the screws. So it, it has held well. Um, it's just, I don't know, me being as anal as I am, I think there's a better way of doing it to put more even pressure on this rather than just where the fasteners I'm not going to bore you with all the details of uh, removing the skylight. It's uh, quite labor intensive. Let's put it that way. So you want to just dig underneath, dig the uh, the butyl putty from around the screw, from around the screw heads. And most of the time, I've found that these are uh, square drive Roberts, I believe it. Call it. I can't remember, but. Um, Anyway, so you expose the, expose the head, then I take a pick, and you want to go down into the, the square. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the camera, look at what I'm doing, and try not to fall off the roof. So, <laughs> bear with me here. So dig out the, the putty from the square drive. Then I'll usually force a, a regular screwdriver down in, get it going a turn or two. Then I'll go to my and that that one didn't want to come out. So I have to get creative with that. And the other three started coming out, but like I said, this is quite labor intensive, so. What I generally will do first of all is take a razor blade and cut around the perimeter, the edge of it. Then once you get the screws out, you should be able to lift the, the skylight off and then just clean the last little bit of putty, the last inch or so, rather than having to pull all the putty off the skylight. So that, that does save a little bit of time. All right, so I got the dome removed and there's just the inner one separated. The inner one is actually still very pliable, and I'm going to clean it up and reuse it. Um, I'm thinking the UV must have attacked the outer one and saved the inner one, so it's in really good shape. So I'm just going to clean it up and return the other one. I like this one a little better because it's not quite as much of a dome, so it'll create a little bit bigger of an air gap. I got a clear one to go inside this one, and I ended up having to get it from a different vendor. I bought the outer one from Recreation Specialty, I believe it is, and the inner one from Icon because they had a different dome height. But it was only going to net me about a, oh, I don't know, half an inch, three quarters of an inch gap between them. Whereas this is a good two plus inches, so I like that gap better for insulation purposes. And there's the opening. Uh, it's sealed up well for 20 years. It had, I have no water intrusion, so now I just need to go around and clean up the perimeter and get it all prepped and ready to accept the uh, the new one. Um, took me probably an hour, maybe a little over an hour, hour and a half, uh, up and down the ladder a couple times, but most part just to reveal the head of the screws and then uh, I've got all the the butyl, the original butyl tape. And sealant cleaned off used a uh, putty knife and just kind of went around and it's best to just kind of take like about 60 or about an eighth of an inch at a time and just kind of work at it and it'll fold it over if you try to take the whole thing at once you get a lot of surface area there that you're pushing so if you just kind of shave away at it it'll roll it over and it comes off well it comes off it's not easy but it comes off then once I got all that done, then I went around with a razor blade and made sure I got everything in the immediate area. 
and then followed it with some mineral spirits, uh, copious amounts of mineral spirits on rags, and wiped around the edge. So we are ready to accept the new one. So now he's got to go clean off the uh, inner bubble, and I'm ready to start All assembling. Right. Well, I might end up in the way a little bit on this one. I'm going to try to work quick here. Run a bead, probably a good three eighths of an inch wide, and I'm focusing when I come to a screw hole. I'm actually standing the caulk gun up in the screw hole and kind of injecting some of this butyl down into the screw hole. Probably not necessary because it's all going to get covered over, but just to be on the safe side. Got the clear panel just flopped to the side there. So it'll just flip right over. Be careful, this stuff is stringy, so don't go pulling it across anywhere. You don't want it to relieve, relieve the tension on your um, caulk gun. So I've got the corners marked where this is going to lay. We're just going to push it down into place. And you'll see the, on the clear one especially, you'll see the, the butyl flatten out and actually ooze out of the original screw holes. I'll make sure that it is completely sealed all the way around. See, it's flattened all the way out around. All right, and last, the framework. Again, seeing as how long the OEM one lasted, I'm gonna guess this is way, way overkill. But, I guess that's the way we do stuff. Put a couple, start a couple in the hole here and I've got to come to and drill through the clear because I went through the smoke but I definitely have to go here and drill through the
cleaning, I scrubbed it in when we got back from South Dakota in September because we got caught in some major wind over there. So I washed the coach, got up here, did a full detail scrub of the roof. And then when we were in Moab in October and the swell in November, we got into some more hellacious winds. And I hadn't been up on the roof since. But during this, doing this project, I realized that I gotta get up here and after our first outing, I think, I need to leave it outside and get up here and give it a good scrubbing. Okay, that's all of them. So, uh, and like I said, they, they, rec the re they recommend you do not use Dicor on the Lexan. Something about the, I'm not a chemist, but something about the chemical composition that will break the, uh, um, the Lexan down. So I'm not going to use the Dicor, or I use the uh, one called an SB140 Specialty Recreation. Sent one with their skylight called an SR140. I think it's pretty much the same thing. It's just thinned down. Uh, butyl in a tube. Icon also has one. But I think I am going to do it go around the outside of my framework and my screw heads with some Dicor self leveling. Probably don't need to, but I want to just to make sure. Make sure this is the last time I have to do this repair. Like I said, I can't complain. It's the coach is 20 years old. This year, and this is the first, well, it was the original Skylight, so I really can't complain, but I don't want to do it again. All right, there she is, completed. I went around with the, the screw heads, and then just a little bit along the top edge, and let it level over, and flow over, down to meet the butyl. I don't think butyl has any really ceiling power outside of being you know underneath something or sandwiched between something so just having a beta butyl there um, I know it's sandwiched all in between the layers so that, that's a good sign but I I don't know that it really has any um, ceiling characteristics of its own just out in the open like Dicor does so but I'm a good at the closest point screw head I'm a good inch away from the Lexan of the smoked uh, skylight. So I just put it around all the screw heads and like I say, just draped it over the edge and it's just now flowing out over the sides. So this project is D-U-N done. So get up here and clean the roof after our first outing and uh, I've inspected the roof while I was up here. All my other decor looks pretty good. So hopefully we're done up here for the Look nice a little bit as far as repairs. I'll get up here and scrub it after our first trip and then check it again. In the okay, fall. well, that pretty much concludes the skylight replacement on our Monaco Dynasty. So I appreciate you watching. Um, if this was helpful, uh, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. I welcome the comments and uh, see you on the road somewhere. Safe travels. Thanks for watching.